make it a priority. And what we sample is love by the majority. But you and minority in terms of thought, narrow minded, and poorly taught about hip hop and all the silly game. To erase my music so no one can use it. You step on us and we'll step on you. Can't have your cake and eat it too. Talking all that jazz. Happy Monday. Hello. Hello. Is the mic working? Is the mic working? No. Hello. Happy Monday. All right. I'm Steve Hamer. I teach in the English department here. And uh, it's my... All right, that's a lot of heckling going on in the uh, welcome, welcome to First Monday. Welcome to the first, first Monday of the academic year. Woo! Come on! You know, I have to admit, when I first heard the idea of First Mondays, I was more than a little bit skeptical, for I have a long history of not looking forward to Mondays. I don't like Mondays. Oh, I'm looking forward to Monday. Oh, it's Monday. Is it Monday yet? TGIM. You don't hear it. Not from me. But at Colorado College, one of the things that Colorado College teaches you is that there are not all Mondays are created equal. There are some Mondays that are first Mondays. And those of us who live and breathe and walk and talk the block plan know what it means to wake up on that first Monday of a new block with that curious mixture of anticipation and excitement, nervousness, wondering, will you get to class? for 9 a.m. You know what it's like to wake up on a first Monday. Where's your class? What are you taking? What are you teaching? Where is the class? Is it Cosset? Is Cosset? Are you sure that's the name of the building? Cosset? Is Cosset the prof or the place? Professor Cosset's class, where is it? Indeed, uh, first Mondays uh, bring us all together in a way that doesn't happen on other campuses. And I think you can feel it. You can feel it this morning, the handing out of syllabi across campus, the taking of names, noting of absences, that weird strategic moment when you enter the classroom and try to figure out where you're going to sit on that first day is very important. And the way in which we all, on the block plan, move in this kind of coordination, move with the same rhythms, no matter what we're taking and no, no matter what we're teaching, that's really what, uh, what First Monday is all about, is about the way in which we are cohesive as a community in a way that simply, at least I don't think so, happens at other campuses. And indeed, it has taken the whole community. It's been a massive uh, collaborative cross-campus effort that has brought, uh, has brought the uh, breakbeat players here today to perform uh, a little bit of how we got on Idris Goodwin's remarkable play. Uh, and I need to acknowledge a couple of people. First of all, I'd like to thank the uh, Academic Events Committee for their good humor and good taste in supporting matter, this venture and their support and just of all kinds. Academic Events! I want to thank uh, Aaron Kohik uh, uh, from the press for producing such an awesome poster. Aaron's right over there. Yeah. I encourage you to steal as many of those posters now that the event is actually happening. Bring it to you. Bring it with you when we have lunch and get it signed and then sell it on eBay for an exorbitant amount of money. I want to thank the Blue Key Honor Society who's done such a great, great job getting the uh, word out about today. Most particularly, Danelli Gillespie and Elizabeth Lilly. They were responsible for the first Monday news flush that most of us have seen around campus and which included contributions from Caleb Roos, Ariana Glantz, and Nicole Fazio. And I think you'll agree with me that that news flush is one of the greatest things you've ever read in the CC Watch. And let me hear it for that. And last but not least, we are thankful for the uh, assistance of the Office of the Dean of Students, uh, most particularly Dean Edmonds, who we contacted, we contacted very early in the process. Uh, we were talking about this one morning, uh, Lisa and I were having breakfast, and uh, we didn't know if we could get the funding, we didn't know if we could get the cooperation, we didn't know if we could get the buy-in from across campus. And uh, I emailed uh, Dean Edmonds, and instead of emailing me back, he texted me back. Yes, we can. 
Thank you, Dean Edmonds. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Idris Goodwin. He's a playwright who performs, a rapper who writes essays, a teacher who makes albums. He's been recognized for his work across mediums by the NEA, the Ford and Mellon Foundation, the New York Times, and NPR. He's been on HBO. He's been on the Discovery Channel. And yes, he's been on Sesame Street. <laughs> and right now, he's Colorado College's Mellon Fellow in the Arts in the, in the, uh, in the theater dance department. And this is his first Monday at Colorado College. That's right, not only is he the first Monday, this is his first block here at Colorado College, his first day of classes. The name of the class is writing for performance, and I'm willing to bet that before today is done, you're gonna want to take that class. So here he is, Idris Goodwin. All right, thank you very much. How you all doing? All right, very good. Um, so uh, I definitely want to uh, second uh, Stephen's comment, uh, Stephen's thank yous. Um, there were a lot of folks that went into putting this together, and I deeply appreciate it. Um, this opportunity means a, an incredible amount to me. Uh, but I definitely, definitely want to thank and get a round of applause for Stephen Hayward for inviting me and being just a huge uh, supporter uh, of this program and, and my time here. So one round for Stephen Hayward, please. Um, and I, I also want to give a, a shout out to um, the technical crew here, um, Sarah Zinn, Jason Taylor, and um, Marco, I'm sorry I didn't get your last name, so Marco. Uh, so one round, <laughs> I wanted to shout them out for, uh, for working with us. Um, what you're going to see today is, is, is mainly like a stage reading, a script and hand reading, uh, but there are still, even with that, there are still little, little things that uh, are necessary. So we didn't have a ton of time, and they came in on a Sunday uh, to help us put this together. Uh, so I just wanted to make, um, share a, a little bit of um, the background uh, on myself and this type of work, um, and a little bit on the type of work I'm going to be teaching uh, during my time here. Um, and then we'll get into the play. So um, as many of you know, I've made a name for myself as a poet, an essayist, and a playwright. Uh, I've, written, I've written a wide array of performance work influenced by everything from the Coen Brothers to the Food Network. Uh, but before I was uh, any of those things, uh, I was a participant in hip hop culture. Before I had any thought of teaching or publishing, I was listening to this new thing called rap music in my bedroom and wondering, how are they doing that? Now, when we talk about hip hop in an academic setting, uh, as I've been blessed to do for the past 10 years, uh, we're often talking about it from a sociological, cultural standpoint. I mean, it is, after all, a global force created by a bunch of poor kids of color in economically depressed highly diverse post-industrial New York City. And since its birth in the late 70s, it has made millionaires out of college dropouts. And I am, of course, speaking about the corporate record label heads. <laughs> Hip hop's indelible influence can be found everywhere from education to politics to technology. Fan or not, you have to admit that it has shifted the paradigm of how we view art, youth, and our national identity. And for this, it continues to be the subject of panel discussions and symposiums. I am actually attending one in Denver in a couple days. It is often praised for its ability to bridge cultural divides, but also chastised for its brash sentiment, unfiltered reflection of America's shallow obsessions. And these conversations should and will continue. But me, I am still asking the question, how are they doing that? And now I'm asking, what can I learn? Uh, in block three, I'll be teaching a course entirely devoted to exploring those questions. How does DJ Jazzy Jeff scratch a record? How does Dr. Dre pastiche various sounds to make a slamming beat? How does Lauryn Hill compose those verses and choruses? How can Jay-Z stand on a stage in Madison Square Garden alone with one microphone and hold the attention of thousands? In what traditions are these artists standing? Uh, in my first book, These Are the Breaks, along with this stage play you're going to see, 
Uh, they're both greatly informed by the traditional aesthetics of the hip hop DJ. When those early 70s Bronx DJs performed for neighborhood block parties, they discovered how to extend the breakdown section of a record. Why? Because it was during those breakdown sections when the people would get most excited. If only someone could figure out how to loop these free flowing breakdowns on the spot. And remember, this is the early 70s. It couldn't be more analog. But a kid named DJ Cool Herc figured out how to do it. You take two of the same records on two different turntables. As one plays, you cue the other one. One ends, you play the other one. So while the other plays, you cue the first one, the other ends, and you play the first one, and so on and so forth. You follow that? <laughs> <laughs> and thus, the iconic two turntables symbolism was born. The microphone came a little later. Those loaded snippets were called breakbeats. They served as the audio stage on which dancers and later rappers got loose, styled, rocked. Breakbeats were created from disco, Afro-Latin funk, rock and roll, rhythm and blues, and blue-eyed soul, and blended with German craft work techno, 90s, 1960s TV theme songs. Breakbeats are true polycultural relics. They were birthed from one's audacity to not stand idly by and let the record simply spin, the audacity to make art from disruption. As a writer of poetry and drama, I too hope to fracture familiar paradigms, pulling out the parts that get the crowd hype, playing around with familiar rhythms, melodies, and cadences. But even more than the technique, there is an ethos, a desire to make new from old, to put the pulse of today in the flesh of before, they call it beat digging, when they comb the record stores for that obscure bass line and drum solo, anything that can be de deconstructed, reassembled, and later repurposed. There is a desire to interact and integrate oneself with cultural artifact. Sampling, when done poorly, borders on plagiarism, but at its best, it provides a link between now and then. This is what is at the heart of the culture, it is interested in rupturing, blending, and reviving the forgotten, building bridges between cultures, or dare I say, worlds, which in my view is the whole point of this art thing, that and some free wine and cheese. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, should have said, I should have said that. I should have said that earlier, all right. Um, today, uh, I'll be sharing excerpts of my breakbeat play, How We Got On. It is a coming of age comic drama about small town teenage dreamers who despite their location and means, use their creative ingenuity to try to change their lives. It's 1988 and a show called Yo MTV Raps has begun its proliferation of hip hop music into the mainstream. Hank, Julian and Luann, three 15 year olds, dream about one day being on this show but they live in the Midwestern suburbs, but they are nevertheless determined to be heard. Much like Thornton Wilder's Our Town, another meditation on small town life, How We Got On utilizes a narrator. And that's pretty much where the similarities between those two plays end. <laughs> My narrator, named The Selector, builds this story like she would a mixtape or a nightclub set. She treats each character like a record, scratching cross-fading scenes, rap soliloquies, and basic lessons on sampling. She occasionally provides the voices of offstage characters. What you'll see today are a smattering of selected moments, a taste, if you will, stripped down to the bare elements, performed by Courtney Edie Richardson, Terrell Donnell Sledge, Brian Quijada, and Diana Bouye. But enough out of me, I'm gonna let the selector take it from here. Listeners, tonight I bring you the flip to the A, the B side. I'll be toasting, I'll be selecting the waves, steering the wheel. Welcome, I am Selector. Now normally my show runs about an hour and a half, but we're gonna keep it under an hour for you all today. So I'll just be playing the essentials. We going back to 88, y'all. Now this won't be an uptown boogie down story about the urban loins from which hip hop was squeezed, and no doubt, that story is beautiful, 
But tonight's selection brings us to the hill. Somewhere around Motown, just up from Chi-Town, not far from Ohio, but not quite Indiana. The middle, the land in between, America's breadbasket. There are no b-boys, DJs, or taggers, but best believe hip hop lived in the hill. The summer of 88, the premiere of Yo MTV Raps. We're gonna start things off with Henry Charles, 15, or as he calls himself, John Henry, freshman, or as he is called by everyone else, Hank. What up? Glad to finally be on Yo MTV Raps. I watch it all the time. I know usually you got rappers from New York and Compton, but I do my thing too. I mean, I got the skills to pay the bills. I look fresher than anybody. Where, where I come from doesn't matter. It's about how I get busy on the mic. That's all that matters, right? Because, I mean, everybody. Look, most people in real life, rich people, poor, Handsome people, ugly, citizens, immigrants, everybody takes an L, a loss, but in a rap song, you're the winner. Even if you're small, you're fat. Even if you're black and you live in the hill. Hank, Henry Charles lives 35 miles outside the urban epicenter we call the city. No, not a lot of black kids in the hill. I stand out, sure, but not just because of that, because I can rap. Oh yeah, they like rap out here, sure. You know, not really though, as a joke, I think. <laughs> Even the stuck up black kids say rap is ghetto. Anybody else, there is no competition. All the real good MCs live back in the city. As far as the hill, I am the fresh prince. <laughs> or is he? As Hank Henry Charles boasts about being the best and only MC in the hill, just down the road at a different school, there was another. The rhyme villain, the lyrical criminal, the smooth soul technician. Oh yeah, I heard of him. I go by Big Vicious. See, I'm part Latino. <laughs> Julian Mark Hayes doesn't sound very, you know. So I thought a name like Vic was more, you know. <laughs> Plus it's kind of sharp like a blade. Not trying to stereotype the Latinos carry knives or whatever. <laughs> anyway, I'm flipping it. I'm sharp with the rhymes. Cut you. Literally. Some of the kids at school said a couple things about him. He's real good, and I don't even like rap. Little rumors. Probably not true. I heard Vic Vicious had a record deal back when he lived in the city. The Vicious is like the old school. Everybody was treacherous, furious. Vic Vicious. Somebody might get hurt. I heard he's LL Cool J's cousin. Well, there can be two rapping dudes in the hill. Oh, I heard. Hey, yo, tomorrow I'm gonna send word. Vic Vicious, I wanna square off. You know, verbally. The battle was set. First Friday of that December parking lot of the new mall on Fisher Road, noon. What's my strategy? Everything I listen to right now, well, most of it anyway, is battle rap or it's about a girl. Sometimes it's about Africa, but usually it's I'm this, I'm that, you're not. A good battle rap has something personal, specific about the opponent, like your shoes are whack, or your rhymes are whack, or your family is whack, or you, you just whack. <laughs> but you know, even more specific. So you gotta do your research, at least that's what my dad always says, not about rap, but when I have a paper or something, he always says, there's a science to everything. So I start to do my research on this big, vicious guy. Realize I met this dude before. In 1988, if you're on the hill or the city, you want to be Michael Jordan. Summer before we started at our different high schools, we're at the same basketball camp. Basketball camp! These kids can't ball. The same basketball camp. These kids can't ball. The same basketball camp. Basketball camp. These kids can't ball. The same basketball camp. These kids can't ball. We're at the same basketball camp. These kids can't ball. Basketball camp. Huh? Yeah, man, they suck. I really don't even like basketball. Bunch of rich punks. Everybody's got on new shoes. Just because you got on new Jordans, don't make you Jordan. Those Reeboks you got on look pretty new. I like Reeboks. <laughs> In 
my old neighborhood, these guys would be, man, they'd be crying. Where are you from? City. <laughs> Me too. What side? North. You? Wes. You don't like ball. What do you do then? Rap. Oh yeah? Wait, you like rap too? Yo, check this out. <laughs> guys, did I blow my whistle? Hustle, hustle, hustle. Coach took him off the blue team, put him on the red team, so didn't really talk to him after that. But now, I'm gonna do more than just talk. I'm gonna... First battle? No, where, where'd you get that from? You gotta check your sources. No, 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 no. I've been in a million battles. I've never been taken out. First battle. Not that it isn't obvious, painfully, but the battle, first Friday of that December parking lot, New Mall on Fisher Road, noon, was Hank's first battle. Not counting, of course, the times he'd verbally demolished his flip side in the mirror. It would be his first and last. I guess you want to know what happened. The parking lot of the new mall on Fisher Road was packed. Even some of the stuck up black kids who say rap is ghetto, I never knew so many people liked rap. I got there before. He came like 15 minutes late. He had on the new Jordans. He was acting like he didn't remember me from basketball camp. And I caught him eyeballing my bike, which is nice, but his is even nicer. So I start thinking, I'm gonna crush this kid lyrically and take his bike as my prize. You go first. No, you? No. We're closer to my high school, so you're a guest in my kingdom. You I'm, go first. I moved here before you. You're a guest in my kingdom. You go first. Don't cry. I'll go first. And off he went. And he's not saying anything about how bad I was at basketball last summer. Nothing about my shoes, and they're looking pretty busted. He's just ripping it, line after line, crystal clean, like a, like a recording. <laughs> On top of that, he just looked so cool the whole time. Like, it ain't no thing. My mouth is like, when he drops the last line, the crowd, even the stuck up black kids who say rap is ghetto, they erupt. Now, now most people would be like, how am I supposed to follow that? But I thought, yo, my verse is solid. Ain't nothing vicious about this villain. His vows ain't vibrant. His vocals don't hit. He's softer than violets. I break him apart, resort to violence. Show up at his funeral, black clothes and violins. Boo! Boo! I kept on. I was gonna say my rap. They couldn't hear me. They were already patting Vic on the back. Even people from my own school. Then he rode off on my bike. Battle of the Bands. Hill Foster High! Big Vicious Live! Hill Foster High! Battle of the Band. Make some noise! That was kind of weak, let me hear you. We'll work on it. So yo, 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 check it out. Big Vicious in the place to be. So yo, check it. Just throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. And if you got on clean underwear, let me hear you say, oh yeah! Oh yeah! And it don't stop, check my ride. V is for victory. Listen and get with me. Straight out of the city, giving competition misery. It ain't a mystery, the place be jumping. Is he some kind of rapping angel or something? V is for Vic. Letters that stand for vocals I contain. Put you on the dance floor, you better clap. That's what you got hands for. I'm the answer to the question, who was that cantor? Back and forth and forth and back and rap packed exciting. Your heart's attacking. Vicious is feeling bubbles are vibrant. Vocal straight hit, rappers softer than violence. I'll break them apart. Resort to violence, show up at his funeral, black clothes and violins. Yeah! <laughs> My name is Big Vicious, y'all. Peace. We have tallied the votes, ladies and gentlemen. Your third place winner, Trojan Horse. Give it up for him! <laughs> yeah! In second place, put your hands together for the Masturbators. Now, 
Drum roll, please. Your first place winner of the Hill Foster High Battle of the Bands, put your hands together for Steel and Dan. <laughs> Steel and Dan's version of Patience brought the house down. Everybody takes an L. I don't take L's. I hand them out. Oh. I should have won that. Why did I win that? Some weird rhymes you wrote me. No, they weren't. What the hell is a cantor? Nobody knows what a cantor is. I do. You don't. <laughs> Losing? Hells no. Not to no stealing, Dan. It's okay. It's not okay. Losing is not allowed in my house. It's just Battle of the Bands. What'd your father do, Hank? Well, he's a... My father was like all American. In football, basketball, track. He was the number one sales rep for the whole Midwest for like five years in a row. All my half-brothers are top ranked in whatever they do. Nobody loses in my family, Hank. You might be satisfied to just be okay, but not me. Not me. Yeah. Stealing Dan? Hells no! That rock stuff is whack. They got instruments. People in the hill, they go crazy for that. Well, I'm gonna get me an instrument. You'll write me some fresher rhymes. I'm gonna come back and show the hill what's up. Show everybody. There is an art to taking an L. Swallowing pride, struggling to accept defeat when the memory won't die. I get deep on you sometimes, huh? <laughs> but don't worry, we don't stop rocking. Luann Finnis. Like Hank, she was a part of that first wave. How come, how come? To Hank and Julian, she's one of the stuck up black kids that thinks raps is ghetto. How come, how come, how come you didn't have any beef? Oh, Pete don't let us play rap in here. <laughs> no, at the Battle of the Bands, you could have won if you had beats. Pizza for finish. Sore loser, huh? You can flow all right, but you need more to make it unique. <laughs> finish! Pizza for finish. That's 1258. <laughs> My dad has a tab. Yeah, yeah, I know who your dad is. You probably heard of her dad, too. Nat Fennis, NBA center. A lot of pro athletes play for the city but live in the hill. Football, hockey, baseball. Luann is one of five, all girls. Nat is determined to father a boy. People like to joke and say he's already got a starting lineup. Luann don't like sports, but she can be competitive. Dad, I want to learn an instrument. Saxophone. Nah. That's where it's at. I played in the school band. We were state champs. Did you know that? I know that, Dad, yeah. But um, I was thinking the drums. Drums? Now that's where it's at. If I had been rapping and drumming at the same time, I would have won that battle of the bands for sure. Rapping and drumming simultaneously? Don't nobody want to hear that. Get yourself a saxophone. Smooth. Play some of that jazz. You'll get all the ladies. You got a girl yet? Not yet. Yeah, Dad? Are, 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 are there any extracurricular activities at the school that you're interested in? Not at school. None? My school had all sorts of interesting pursuits for us to challenge ourselves. I'm not interested in what they offer at school. You seem to be an expert in what you don't want to do. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Pick something, you got to stand up to play. Where people can see you, that's the key. I know what I'm interested in. It's just not offered at my school. Poetry. Rap, dad. Drums, dad. Rap, dad. Drums, dad. Rap, dad. Drums, dad. I will be seen. I gotta study, Dad. I will be seen!
That moment of spark. Recognition that music lives in the body. Knows no zip code, is not beholden to any brass, woodwind, strings, reeds. Recognition that funk, <laughs> it lives in the DNA. Pardon me, excuse me, let me introduce me. A L to the U to the A double N. Known around town, but my mic, my best friend. Paper and pen, let me begin. The freshest girl out, no need to pretend. Highly academic, creative, stylish, wild with the words I compiled, not childish, mature for my age. Get up on the stage, beat come on, I go off on a rampage. <laughs> Some girls, two big earrings. Like, like, a, like a battle song or like a dance song? Just chilling. Leaned against the car like, I'm just here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just here. It'd be amazing. <laughs> just chill, man. Nobody's stressing. Just living like, fuck it. <laughs> like, I got this car, I got these girls, these jewels, these skills, but you know, Ain't no thing. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. Ain't no thing. <laughs> Let's do this, man. We gotta get on. I got talent. You should write the rhymes. Let me say them. Boom! LL Cool J was only 15 when he got on. <gasps> I'm 15. <laughs> get on. You're not LL Cool J from Queens. Yeah, well, I am who I am from right here, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How do we do it? We need a demo. Word. But the only studio in the hill who makes advertising jingles. Kyle Jorgen's dad owns it, and he's a racist, so that's out. And I'm not just saying that. I know, I heard that. It's true. <laughs> well, yo, look what I can do. punches Hank in the shoulder. Ow! Julian hits him again. Uh, stop! Julian bounces on his toes like a boxer. Come on! Stop, man! Oh, Quit! Oh, oh. You gonna cry? Come on! Julian slaps Hank and chuckles. <laughs> stop! <laughs> Julian, Julian, stop! Julian stops and forces a laugh. You got any brothers? No. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! We're gonna do it. Even from out here in the middle of this nothing. You'll figure it out. You see cardboard boxes, I see dance floor. You see train, I see canvas. You see record player, I see instrument. Hip hoppers have always figured it out. Hank, Henry Charles, John Henry didn't have turntables or a crossfader. What he had was his boom box and a record button. He would record Julian's beatboxing, and they'd rap over that. <clears throat> I'm trying to have a hottie 
Hot Wheels and a tidy house I got from raps that fly like many mouse. Why'd you stop? I think I need to say it. Trying to have a hottie, Hot Wheels and a tidy house. I'm fly. My raps is mighty mouse. That makes no sense. Makes sense to me. Oh, even better. My raps is mighty mouse. They'll knock you out. I don't know if that's... We're doing this together, right? I mean. Let me have the pen so I can cheat. Hank doesn't budge. You gotta learn how to make rhymes for me, like how I would say them, not you. Hank tries to take the rhymes back. Julian won't let him. Ah, oh, man. I wanna change all these two. All these two. Ugh, I wouldn't say stuff like this. Hank tries again. No luck. Oh, and this right here? Come on. Sounds kinda, I don't know, it sounds soft. Stop! Hank tries again, more aggressive. Chill out! Hank won't let up. Julian keeps him away with forearms and <laughs> elbows, laughing the whole time. Hank's frustration escalates until finally he punches Julian somewhere in his back harder than he's ever hit anyone in his entire life. <sighs> Julian lets out a painful wince and falls to one knee. Hank picks up the rhymes, crumples, and tears them up. After a few moments of breath catching, Julian looks up at Hank. <sighs> hey, Hank. See you later, man. Come back with something better next time. I waited until the house was sleeping, tiptoed down the steps, got on my bike. Needed a little fresh air, some inspiration. Julian! See, there's this water tower, probably the highest point really in the hill. I remember when we moved out here from the city, I could see it from the freeway. I'd never seen anything like it. Julian! Dad? I always imagined that. That on top, you could probably see the whole town. But every time I go there, I look at how high to the top. Realize I'm not as brave as I think. You got anything to drink? I got school tomorrow. And then it started to rain. But I stayed. Sat underneath the water tower, listened to the rain. I knew there was something better. I just had to wait for it. You don't got anything stashed? Little girly man schnapps? <laughs> no. Shut my eyes tight. Waited. Did you lose a client today? Go to bed. You got school tomorrow. And then something better came. Straight off the interstate, no skyscrapers. Far from the street talk and sky pages. Winter break. Far from the corners, graffiti, street lights. Car speakers bump and jams that we like. <laughs> Hank came back with something. Straight off the interstate, no skyscrapers. Far from the street talk and sky pages. Riot in the hill. Straight off the interstate, no skyscrapers. Far from the street talk and sky pagers. Far from the corners, graffiti street lights. Car speakers bump and jam that we like. The hill, straight from the hill. This is where we chill, yeah, right here. Green in the hill, quiet in the hill. But listen right here, there's a ride in the hill. Malls and made of D's, may I take your order please? Nah, forget that, we get disorderly. Parents support me, well think I'm crazy. I'd rather kick a rhyme than act how they raise me. Drama don't phase me, I ain't an actor. My motivation motivating crowds to answer. Yo, we in the hill, no crowds to move. We got a lot of show, even more to prove. Green in the hill, quiet in the hill, but listen right here, there's a ride in the hill. The hill, straight from the hill, this is where we chill, yeah, right here. We young, we restless, cereal breakfast, no gold rings, no gold necklace, five day school week, work on my technique, breaking up English, you can't extinguish my fire. Find me on the basketball court, lyrical snowball smash your whole fort. No violent tendencies, lyrical symphonies, drop gems that shine, give people epiphanies. I am a simile, just like a metaphor, meek to this rap brick flare to figure four. Green in the hill. Quiet in the hill, but listen right here, there's a ride in the hill. Tree line, 
Street wide and empty. Reindeer sweaters and lawns don't tempt me. Green in the hill, quiet in the hill. But listen right here, there's a ride in the hill. The hill, straight from the hill. This is where we chill, yeah, right here. Green in the hill, quiet in the hill. But listen right here, there's a ride in the hill. <laughs> I'm not sure what it means. <laughs> but I like how I feel what I'm saying. So let's do another one. We had Riot in the Hill. We had Class Clown, Breaking Beats, and Curfews. <laughs> we had Shut Up. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Shut up! Yeah, I'm talking to you. Because you keep running your lid, running your lid, running, 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 running your lid. I see you in the halls, flapping your jaws. Rich kids think you're fresh, but you got flaws. But me, I'm dope, even though I'm broke. I'm gonna get paid for making words that smoke. So shut up! Yeah, I'm talking to you. Cause you keep running your lid, running your lid. <laughs> running, 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 running your lid. So shut up! Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I dub at least 10 before bed every night. Pass them out the next day. Bus driver, lunch lady, coach, I swear to God, Mrs. Lynham, let me hand in my demo instead of a paper. I feel the spirit of gospel. Deep howl, it's reminiscent of Leroy Jones. Ooh, such soulful texture. Negro spirituals, James Baldwin, invisible man. February, we shall overcome. A minus at my job bagging groceries, if I see somebody who looks like a rap fan, any and all black people, if I see somebody who looks like a rap fan, I slip the demo in the bag. Basketball team, football team, baseball team. Hank is more in charge of distribution team, and marketing. Yeah, you know, club, he writes the rhymes and makes society, the beats. I mean, tennis I lay club, box down and say cheer, his rhymes, but yeah, it's, it's pretty much his baby. Staff, yeah, it's, you know, Track team, the Hank has team, a lot of energy. Student council. He gets real excited. Rich people, poor, yeah. handsome people, ugly. <laughs> Everybody is playing our tape right now. Dad? I'm watching my program. It's a commercial. I like this commercial. Come on, Dad. <laughs> so sensitive. What's up? Uh, did you get a chance to, um... What? Did you, uh... You get somebody pregnant? No! <laughs> hmm. Listen to my, my tape. Ooh, my show's back on. <laughs> Grab me whatever's cold in the fridge, huh? a tape in our grocery bag. <laughs> My dad is famous, but he's not Jimmy Jam or Terry Lewis. I'm just trying to get our name out there. John Henry, that's your nom de plume? Yeah. That's a weird rap name. My father doesn't like rap. He was gonna throw it out. Like, no rap? I'll listen to it. Really? Not too professional. You should see the equipment we're using. Oh, is that why it sounds like this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're using pretty simple equipment. My boom box, a cheap mic. The guys on, do you watch Yo! MTV Rap? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, those guys, they go Guys, it's not just guys, you know? No, no, I mean guys. Like when you say, hey, you guys. Like, <laughs> when you just mean y'all. Well, y'all could mean all y'all boys and girls. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I rap too. Yeah? <laughs> could I hear something? Then she rapped, and she was dope. Then she asked if she could be in our crew. Man, hell's no. <laughs> she said it didn't sound professional. That's what you said. Hank, 
You're like my DJ. It's okay for me to say that. I mean, listen, she could flow. Why not? Just stop talking. You just take all the stuff so serious. Everybody is playing our tape right now, man. We got on. Hardly. If you want to be all negative, you be negative. But don't go bringing me down with your negativity. I'm just hearing what everybody else is saying. Who's saying? Everybody thinks it's fresh. Here? Not in the city. When I went to go visit my mom, I played it for some of the guys in my own neighborhood. Oh, yeah, in the city? Well, what'd they say? Sigh. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're doing your thing. Oh, they got rap in the hill now? Well, they're just jealous. Dissing because we rap for the suburb. Gotta you're go. just dissing it because they were dissing it. I'm going to work. All I need is better equipment. Are you fresh? Do you keep it funky? Send us your endless, dopest beats and rhymes to the Rapper's Delight Contest. Grand prize, the Akai MPC. If I had an Akai MPC, I could make a beat out of anything. A what? I'm going to demonstrate. I sampled Hank. Out of anything. Out of anything. Out of, out, 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 out. Now, I'll put a different sound on this one. Right. Out. Right. Out. Right. Out. Out. Right. Right. Now you loop it. Out. Right. Out. Right. Out. Out. Right. Out. Right. Out. Out. Right. That's your drum loop. Now on top of our drum loop, I can blend another element. So let's say you need more to make it. Is our bass line. You need more to make it. Bring it all together. You need more to make it. You need more to make it. You need um, more to right. make it. You um, need more um, to right. make it. You um, need more to right. make it. You need more to make it. You need more to make it. It's a lottery, man. You need more to make it. 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 It's a lottery, man. I bet there's an entry fee. I'll make the greatest suburban rap song ever made. We'll win and we'll get the Akai NPC. We'd have an edge if we put Luann on the, on the song. I'm telling you, guy and girl, back and forth, be fresh. Can't you just hear it? Like, hey, I'm Luann, and I got my nice skirt. And uh, I'm big vicious, and I'm here to make you hurt. Are you afraid she might be better than you? Sometimes, when I'm bored at church, I try and rhyme things in my head. Whatever's in the room, chair, people, hair, steeple. Light, bench, white, inch. And then I challenge myself to word rhymes. Him maker, thin wafer. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, I have always loved rhymes, no? Ever since <laughs> I heard Melly Mel's The Message, broken glass everywhere, people pissing on the stairs, you know they just don't care. I can't take the smell, can't take the noise, got no money to move out, I guess I got no choice. Rats in the front room, roaches in the back, junkies in the alley with a baseball bat. I tried to get away, but I couldn't get far, cause a man with a tow truck could possess my car. Don't, don't push, push me, cause, cause I'm, I'm close, close to the edge. edge. I'm, I'm trying, trying not to lose my head. head. Oh, 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 oh. It's, it's like a jump sometimes, it makes me wonder, wonder how I keep from going. going. <laughs> oh, my sisters used to love that. They would have me sing it whenever their friends would come around. But they would always shush me whenever my mom or dad would come in, especially my dad. But I couldn't stop rhyming. <laughs> Rhymes are made to stick in your mind, right? You can come up with something that can take over somebody's brain. <laughs> oh, one time he heard me singing the message and man, woo, woo, he just went upside my head. I stopped singing that song, <laughs> but I couldn't stop rhyming. I came up with my own rhymes instead. <laughs> he would find them and rip them up. So I just stopped writing. 
on paper. Huh. But now I want them recorded. I want everybody to hear them to get my rhyme stuck, you know? So, what's up, Hank? When you gonna let me rip the mic? So, I just gotta finish this other thing. What, for Julian? He's a good rapper. Huh, we'll see. What's that mean? Means we'll see. Pizza for Finnis. That'd be 1258. Pizza for Finnis. My dad has a tab. Pizza for Finnis. That'd be 1258. Pizza for Finnis. You're not as dope as people say you are. Huh? <laughs> Have you ever had a real challenge? <laughs> I'm gonna count to three. And then what? And we're gonna see who's dope. This is my job. Don't come in my One, job. One. I'm serious. A two. Three. Four. To the five, six, seven, beyond. The queen has arrived to school, you peon. Eon centuries from now, they'll mention me. By feminine energy, my rapping ability. <laughs> It's okay. Ah, that was fly. Was it awful? You're just jealous. Ha! Cause I can rhyme better than you. Ha! You, what you got? Dynamite, excite, explode, expose. Fake MCs, crack they cold. Hope my pose. Foes get flattened, tossed like a salad. Crush with a mallet, crack they whole cabbage. Do enough damage. You ain't a challenge, you baloney, I'm manwich. <laughs> Please, you bout as hard as water. Fragile like your mama's china saucers. This super dope daughter, super fresh rhymes, super fresh style, I'm- Fresher, better, hella fresh to the letter. You wilted moldy spinach, you'll get finished. Strong like Popeye. Not fly, you not. I transform Megatron, you bootleg gobot. <laughs> The rhyme, then bust out the robot. <laughs> oh, even got the devil saying, that MC so hot, blew up your spot with the fresh raps I got. You laughing, but it ain't funny how I flow like snot. Don't need a beat, I rap unique right here in Pizza Pete. Wait, 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 hold on. Were you making that up? Yeah. Like, right on the spot? Do, what, you've never done that before? Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> Do it now. What? <laughs> you scared? Oh, I don't roll with scared babies. I can take back my offer. See, I thought that maybe I could be in your crew, cause you know, every crew has a rapper, a DJ, a human beatbox, and a girl. What crew has a girl? <laughs> Doesn't <it> matter. <laughs> Even if they don't have a girl, they want one. I take back my offer. Hold up. <sighs> you want me to show you how? <laughs> you ain't no MC. You're a poser. Respect, Luann. Massive. Damn, I love that robot line. <laughs> Rap gotta have that improvisation. No parachute. How do you come up with rhymes with no paper? It's easy. For you, maybe. Well, I can show you how to come up with <coughs> rhymes with no paper, but only if you record some of my raps. Yeah, show me. <laughs> Dad? You listen to my tape or what? Uh-huh. Well? That you making them farting noises on there? <laughs> what? You know. <laughs> Really, what'd you think? <laughs> you need to stick with basketball. Well, 
Last night, Luann told me to meet her at the water tower. So I did like before. Waited till everybody went to sleep, hopped on my bike, rode over there. I look around, I don't see her. Was this a prank? But then I hear something far. I look left, I look right, then I look up. She's at the top. She motions for me to come up there. Now, now I was scared, I ain't gonna lie, but I wanted to learn. I mean, no paper, unstoppable, no paper? Hi. I climbed and kept climbing, and I got to the top. First thing you gotta do is accept that there will be mistakes. There will be mistakes. I repeat it like some sort of religious thing. Everything you can see, smell, hear, whatever you're interacting with. I hear the crickets. Every now and then a car goes by. A car door slams, another car door slams, a dog barks, a plane soars up above. And don't forget the joy, because that's what it is you're creating. I mean, even if what you're saying is wrong or messed up, a little ignorant, I mean, just saying stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> your lips, your tongue, your teeth, all got to have joy. I breathe in joy, I blow out joy. <laughs> you breathe in joy, blow out joy, oh, and that's it. <laughs> then you just go. And then it all comes back. Confidence fills your throat. All the words flood my mouth, and then I just go. Rich people, poor, handsome people, ugly, citizens, immigrants, everybody. Rich people, An poor, L. handsome people, An ugly, L. citizens, An immigrants, L. everybody. An L. You could have won if you had beef. You could have won if you had beef. Citizens, immigrants, everybody. Bring the beatbox in. Rich people, poor, beef. handsome people, beef. ugly, citizens, if you immigrants, beef, everybody. You Rich you people, poor, handsome people, beef. ugly, citizens, immigrants, beef. everybody. Beef. Rich beef. people, poor, handsome people, Switch ugly. it up. Seven seconds left. Seven seconds right. Seven seconds left. Seven seconds right. Pardon so me. Rhymes you said. Seven seconds me. right. Seven Pardon so me. Seven seconds right. Seven seconds right. Seven seconds right. Seven seconds right. Pardon so me, please, please let me seven seconds for yours. Right. Seven seconds left. Seven seconds right. Seven seconds left. Seven seconds, seven seconds, seven seconds right. right. Pardon me, excuse me. Let me introduce me. L to the U to the A double N. Go around town, but the mic, my best friend. Amazing. Paper and pen. Let me begin. Amazing. Girl out. Speed it up one time. On the mic to bite. Uh, uh, the mic to bite. Uh, uh. I'm fly, you not fucked up, robot. That was fresh, fresh, fresh. I'm fly, you not fucked up, robot. That was fresh, fresh. Let it all cool out. Let me begin. I repeat. First thing. I repeat. You gotta accept. Is that there I repeat. Will be mistakes. Yeah, show me. Mistakes. First thing. I repeat. You gotta accept. Is that there? I repeat. Will be mistakes. Mistakes. I repeat. First Remember wins. I repeat. Mistakes. Newcomers. Yes, show me. These be the multiple sounds. Cross faded to one, brought back one time, woven to one sound. Toast, hip hop and rap, spirit, body and voice, alive and spitting in the hill. The flip to the A, story just one rap out of many. Thank you.
Terrell Sledge, Deanna Bouye, Courtney Edie Richardson, Brian Quijada. So, uh, thank you all very much. You've been a wonderful audience. Uh, we're now going to, we're now class, going to move over to the, uh, the Rostel uh, for a little, uh, for a little, is that not what it's called? Rostel hype, what you call it? What? What's it called? Rastel. Rastel? We're going over to the Rastel uh, to hang out. You can meet the actors and talk to them and tell them great job they did. And if you have any questions about the play, we'll field those as well. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.